Welcome to the Glendora Historical Society Museum. My name is Karen Cullen. I'm a retired teacher from Glendora, and we're going to have a short tour today. Old fire department from Glendora, which was built in 1913. And we're starting with the very first people who lived where we are now, and they were the Native Americans. They lived here, oh, several thousand years ago. And inside this case are artifacts, stone pestles, and you probably learned about those a little bit in school. Those were found in Glendora in somebody's backyard. And so that shows us that there were people here before the early settlers. And that's what we're going to be talking about next, are the early settlers. But before we do, I want you to look up here and on the wall is a photograph that was taken right about the time the first settlers came and it shows us what the land looked like before Glendora looks like it is today with the trees and the beautiful buildings. It was very different. The first permanent settlers who came to this area were two gentlemen from the south. They were both, had both been in the Civil War. Mr. Bender is over here, and his friend, William B. Cullen, is here, and William Cullen's wife, Mary Alice Fitzgerald Cullen, is there. And they decided after the war was over that they would come west. They flipped a coin to decide whether they go, would go to Texas or whether they would go to California, and the California side won. So they came to this area and they each bought 160 acres in 1874. Mr. Bender was not married at that time, but Mr. Cullen and his wife had two children at that point. At one point they had eight children. So they were the first settlers who came here. Mr. Cullen was my great grandfather. If you were listening carefully when I first introduced myself, you'll remember that my name was Karen Cullen. And so he was my great grandfather, so I probably talk about him more than I would some other people because of that, um, I, because I know more. Um, he, in the Civil War, he was injured and he lost an arm. He had his arm amputated. So he was an adventurer in a new land with only one arm. So his wife helped him a lot. The women were, the women pioneers were very important in the early days. One of the things Mr. Cullen did in the early days, he became the postmaster. And this piece of furniture here was originally for people to keep their spools of thread when they had a store, in the general store. They would sell their thread and it would stay in the drawers. Well, so I don't know how he acquired this, but Mr. Cullen used this to keep people's mail in. And he kept it on his front porch. And then he would go to get the mail in uh, the Chino area and bring the mail here. And people would come to his house to pick up their mail. And that's pretty interesting, I think. This piece of paper here is not the original, it's a copy but it shows how much he paid in taxes. Your parents have to pay taxes. And it shows how much he paid for 160 acres. In 1881, he paid $8.02. Now that might not mean too much to you as younger people, but the adults will be very shocked at how cheap that was, how inexpensive for that many acres. And so I have the real one at my house. He was also the county tax collector for Los Angeles. And so he was collecting his own taxes. But because of that, he had his deputy, it says deputy right there, he had his deputy sign it for him. So his deputy's name was A.E. Sepulveda, which is a pretty famous name in Los Angeles from the early days. In the early days after Mr. Bender and Mr. Cullen 
lived here for a few years, other people started to arrive and, and decide that this was a nice place to live. And one of the people that came, uh, was his name was Mr. Fuller. And he decided to start a town right in the same area. And at that point, Glendora didn't have a name yet. And he named his town Alosta after his daughter. And he allowed drinking and gambling in his town. And not too long after that, Mr. Whitcomb came, Mr. George Whitcomb. And he was a developer from, he was a railroad man from Chicago who decided to develop and plan and make a town. So he named the town Glendora and his organization skills and he was he was a strict religious man and he did not believe in drinking and gambling so he wasn't going to allow that in his town and so after a few years Alasta failed and uh, just kind of crumbled away and became a part of of what was to become Glendora and so next I'm going to tell you a little bit more about George Whitcomb George Whitcomb and his wife Leodora came to what is now Glendora in the early 1880s, 1883, 84. And they, George wanted, liked it so well here, he decided to start a town. And he was, became a real estate, the first real estate man in Glendora. He named his uh, company, the Glendora Land Company, and he convinced the railroad people to build the, the tracks that were coming to Los Angeles to bring them right through his new town. So people would come by train to visit and then they would want to stay and buy property from him. So he came here, this, this little area is made to look like George Whitcomb's office and all of the things in it were, belonged to George Whitcomb. His safe is right here. And the safe is kind of fun because we don't know what's inside the safe. It was broken when they moved it in. So even though we have a combination, we can't make it work. The picture of George Whitcomb and Leodora Bennett Whitcomb, his wife, are hanging on our wall here. George Whitcomb, when he planned the town, named many of the streets after his family members. We have Leodora Avenue, we have Bennett Avenue, which is his wife's maiden name. We have Whitcomb Avenue, and we have Carroll Avenue and Virginia Avenue. Those are all the names of, of his children and his, his wife and himself. He also named streets after states where he, that he had visited or states that he had lived in. So the streets that are north-south in the main part of town are named after states. The main street of town in Glendora used to be called Michigan Avenue. When the town was first built, he planned having the main street be Vista Bonita. And the first businesses were built there, but then eventually Somehow, the, the main street of town became Michigan Avenue. And then back in the, right around 1960, Michigan Avenue was changed to be called Glendora Avenue, which is the main street of town. When we were outside at the beginning of this tour, we were looking at the building which was built in 1913 to be the fire department. So, we recently acquired the bell that was on the fire truck that was used here. The fire truck was a 1915 American La France fire truck. And we have the picture, we, the city owns the fire truck. And if you ever go to a parade in Glendora, the fire truck is in the parade every, every time. And the bell is in the picture. And we now have the bell. It was given to us by Chief Robert Gordon who was the chief many years ago. Another display here shows some of our early police equipment and fire trucks and the, the city hall. There is a room here in the museum that was the original jail. It's a very small area that was the jail because 
There weren't that many bad people here. All right, we're in, we're in the room that we call the kitchen now, but this is, was originally the jail. The door was not here, and the bars are on the, the windows, and you can see a spot on the floor to show, that shows where the bars used to come up. And the jail was, was here from when the building was built in 1913 until 1922 when the new city hall was built. The first school in this area is in this photograph, and it was way back in the 1880s. And it's been called by different names through the years. It's mostly known now as Preston School because the man who owned the property was Mr. Preston. And this building still is standing today. It's not where it was originally. The children in the school, it's just been moved a few blocks. The children in the picture were all the children in that school, a one-room schoolhouse. And uh, my grandfather's right there, and his older sister's right there, and some of his little sisters are here. And uh, the children came from all over the valley, not just Glendora, but all Azusa area. And this is where they went to school. We're going to be talking about the early schools in Glendora right now. Uh, the Preston School was the first school in the 1880s, early 1880s and seven, 1870s also. And then, when after Mr. Whitcomb came, the school, the little school, became too crowded. So Mr. Whitcomb gave the land and the money to build a new school. The first school was called Glendora Grammar School and was built in 1888. And it was a two-story school, very close to where we are right now at this museum. It was just about two blocks away. And that's where all the children in Glendora went to school. And, but after a while, it became too crowded and two more schools were built and the original school was torn down. And one of the schools was built right where Glendora Grammar School was, and that's the school in this bottom picture. It was called Wilson School, and the picture above it was called Roosevelt School. Originally, they were called North School and South School, but they, as you can see in the picture, they're very similar in their appearance. The schools don't exist anymore because the, the town grew and they needed more schools and built more schools and these original schools just weren't safe enough for the children to be in anymore. So the schools were torn down and the, the land was sold and we have now in Glendora five schools, but we don't have Wilson School or Roosevelt School anymore. In Glendora, the high school was called Citrus High School and it is in one of these pictures. And Citrus High School had children, students from Azusa, Covina, Glendora, Claremont, Monrovia, Duarte. It had many students from all over the valley come to it, to high school. And in the 60s, Azusa High School was built in Azusa and Glendora High School was built in Glendora and Covina had their own high school. So. Citrus High School did not exist as a high school anymore. Way back in the early 1900s, Citrus College was begun in the same location as Citrus High School. And Citrus College is still there today, and it's a part of Glendora. The early settlers in Glendora area needed to find some way to make a living and most of them became farmers if they, weren't have, if they didn't have a store or a business. And so they became farmers. They discovered that one of the best things to raise in this area on a farm was oranges and citrus trees of various kinds. And so, that, and that's not just true for Glendora, it's true for all of, of uh, the San Gabriel Valley. It was a, a huge industry. Lots of people were farmers 
of, of oranges. My great grandfather was had a he had 160 acres, so most of that became was oranges. They also raised grapes, but the the main industry was oranges and lemons. So many people came and bought land, and this whole area was orange trees, lemon trees, avocado trees, grapefruit trees, lime trees. The, one of the things, I could go into a long explanation of how they raise the oranges, but I would invite you to come to the museum when it's open again, and, and come to the museum and visit and learn while you're here, because it takes a long time to explain it. The early, in the picture you can see the early, the picking the oranges from the tree and how the horses came through the, between the rows of the trees and they picked, the, picked them. The oranges were taken to a packing house near the railroad tracks so they could be shipped all over the world, all over the United States, and they, they shipped them by ship all over the world. They didn't have airplanes in those days, or not very good ones. <laughs> Here is one of the bags that the pickers used to pick the oranges, and it's a cool bag. The fun part about it is that the bottom of it is open but it had clips, so it worked like this. And the pickers would go up in the tree and pick the oranges, and when it was all full, they would come down the ladder, they'd go to the box, and they would unclip it and let it go, and all the oranges would fall out of the bottom into the box. So they didn't have to take the thing off of their shoulder and then dump the oranges out. So that was a pretty cool invention and they still use those today, a similar kind of thing. They look fancier than this though. The citrus industry didn't last as long as everybody wanted it to. Everybody misses the orange groves, they're not here anymore. In the 1950s, there was a, a, an insect that was not very nice to the trees, and so the trees began to die. Uh, some of the trees didn't, but they, the farmers couldn't get enough water for their trees because it didn't rain very much here. So they ended up, my father was raised oranges, and he had four children, and his water bill that he had to pay for the water was more than the than he got for raising the oranges, for selling the oranges. So they had to begin selling their property. And after World War II, lots of the soldiers came back and they began to build houses. The, the real estate people built houses, bought the, the land from the farmers and built houses for all the new people that moved here and made Glendora what it is today. So. It's a sad thing that it's gone, but that's what happens in life. Things change, and sometimes they change for the better. Now we're pretending that we're inside the packing house. This is where the oranges were brought after they were picked from the trees. And the oranges were brought there to be cleaned and washed and sorted out according to size and taking the ones that didn't look too good, take them out and not use them. And they were packed into fancy boxes that had labels on them. And then they were loaded into, onto a train. And that's why the, the packing houses had to be next to the train track. And after they were loaded onto the train, they were taken all over the country to places where people could not raise orange trees because the weather wouldn't, wasn't good. And so this shows, this is a desk. This is the, the man who did all the work for the, the business end of the packing house. And this is his desk. The, this shows all the, the people who made their orders, 
shows how many how many oranges they brought in how much money they were paid and it kept track of all of them and that's a that's a big book today it would be done on a computer we hope you've enjoyed this tour today and in the future we'd love to have you come and visit follow us on social media we hope to see you soon thank you